Okay, welcome to tonight's study session, or not study session, pre-meeting session for July 10th. And do counselors have any questions on the agenda to start with? Obi? Nope. No questions. Councilor Evans? Councilor Baker? No. Nope. Tim? Okay, I just had one random question. Sure. Just curious on the, um, what is it, Green Valley? No, the townhome product project in State and Omanana. Yes. I'm um, just curious why we didn't apply uh, the to be attached, single family attached guidelines versus trying to make the multifamily ones work with waivers. That's a deeper level of knowledge than I have. So let me see if we've got a staff member. Um, it might also. Wants to come on up. Come on up. Introduce yourself and answer the question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nathan, senior planner. Um, the simple answer is our multifamily design standards are applied to um, any projects over a certain density, th uh, a certain unit threshold. So this exceeded it. So we have to apply them, which is tricky to do. As see so yeah. is it it's at a density of eight units the acre which is no it's the total unit count i'll have to look up what the exact number is but it exceeded that as most of our projects do that are single that are uh of townhouse products huh. yeah i'll have to look it up and what the exact that's all right because I, I know it's just 40 it's clearly under 40 but huh yeah so you have to do that for all of pretty much all the projects over the certain threshold that's weird we should probably fix that some point we are working on it <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you I'm sorry that was just clearly not even worth an email but all right. reminder get your green sheets in to Abby before you leave tonight um, any <clears throat> reports of what's gone on the past two weeks <clears throat> Councilor Izzotti Councilor Seymour I mean I was on I was even on the wrong month that's how <laughs> interesting it was <clears throat> No, I do want to say uh, thanks to especially the emergency personnel and Parks and Rec staff for the uh, amazing lightning and wind show before the show, <laughs> and so. But then, more importantly, getting people evacuated and, and uh, doing that on the drop of a hat. So it was, it was well coordinated, no panic, and people got safe, and then the show went on. So uh, well done, Councilor Emmons. Uh, no, I, I just want to give a shout out to the Westminster Historical Society, though. The baseball game on Saturday was well attended, and it was great weather. So and we won! We won. <laughs> so. And the women protested, and tell them about your little badge. Oh, yes, I just have a little junior police officer badge on, thanks to our PD um, that attended. So, yeah, just for them. <laughs> Councilor Baker. Or Mayor Pro Tem. Um, <clears throat> I attended the um, airport roundtable on mm -hmm. Thursday, and so I shared back with Council the map that they came, um, provided back that is basically the feedback from each uh, person who, or each entity who put a map forward, including us, and I provided that to Mark for the team to look at and say whether or not there was anything they missed. The next meeting, they should um, hopefully come back with some feedback and some ideas of what they can do with those maps, um, as far as maybe some tactics in flight paths that might uh, help the noise issues. Um, the other thing that we talked about at the meeting was uh, dues. So they, by IGA, they have to set dues at the July meeting, and so the there were two recommendations. One was zero. One was what is agreed upon in the IGA. And since it was already agreed upon in our IGA, I felt you know that that would be okay for us to stick with. And so, I shared if there if the body wanted to change it, that I would have to come back and ask what well, even if that was zero, because I feel it was appropriate. Um, but the group um, agreed to stay at the thirty. I think it's thirty six hundred that the IGA says. So, um, I anticipate that that's what we're going to adopt and stick with is, um, that money and that you know, is the original one, so not the increase that we gave, which will continue to allow us to, you know, continue the work past, you know, the extra money we're spending this year on the consultants. And um, you've met with the, the new consultants, been at the last few meetings? They have. The the um, 
two things that are kind of mm -hmm. new is one, the consultants have been at both the last two meetings, and we also have a regular attending FAA member who is assigned to our group, which I hear is not always the case. Um, but we have the same one who shows up. He was not at, he was at this very last meeting, but he wasn't the one prior just because he was on vacation. But we do have an assigned FAA member, which is nice because then they can, you know, deal directly with the FAA and us as they go through the recommendations <coughs> to know whether or not um, recommendations would work for the FAA. And I think you said upstairs during dinner um, that they read what their. Um, they do, we, because I know that, um, and I know that our, we as a council have talked about trying to figure out what's going on with lead, and I know we have a study session in the future um, around the subject, but because the round table has, you know, not, A, they don't have authority over it, but B, that's not what the group was, the, it's not in the IGA, and so they did start reading, um, you know, part of their thing about what we're there for, and they've been trying to um, tone down what's been going on in the meeting so we can get to work, quite frankly. And I will say that there was an addition of, a, of security at this meeting, which is something that we didn't have before. And I feel like um, it was a smaller meeting this time. I don't know if that was because of the holiday or, you know, if um, folks have another reason why they're not coming. But um, they are trying to, you know, keep people on task around <coughs> what, you know, what we're there for. Obviously, just, you know, like any other public meeting, they can say whatever they want. but. Um, we're trying to make it at least uh, relative to the things that we can do there as a group. Councilor Mellon. So the Denver Regional Council of Governments work session was canceled for last week due to the holiday. Um, the, I just wanted to give a shout out to Parks and Rec and all of the um, public safety um, uh, employees that just put on a wonderful event despite the nothing that came over the whole Sorry, if you haven't seen the never ending story. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, well, I'm finding <laughs> as we get older, less people know. Um, and so that was, that was kind of crazy, but I'm glad we got some, uh, some fireworks still going. Um, and gosh, there was one other. I told you. CML? CML was the week before, right? Yeah. No, no, this is sad. I had something. We didn't have a meeting since CML. Oh, we haven't, have we? No. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might remember it. Okay. When you, <laughs> so go ahead and talk. <laughs> well, yes, the fireworks, <clears throat> that's my life. I love it. And so even though we had um, the good, bad, and the ugly, um, it was great, and my neighbors in the next block celebrated for a full three hours and gave me probably more than the city of Westminster had. So I guess they must have a lot of money or something because we just sat in the front window and watched, watched, watched. Um, and my normal <clears throat> World War III people, they must have gone someplace else. Yeah. Okay. Well, they were good. quiet. Mm -hmm. But Gabby didn't like any firework. She was under covers, shaking. Um, Historical Society was terrific. Um, we did win. We had over 200 people there. And our scouts that cooked for us did a great job. They almost um, sold out. Who else could have sold, or where could you have gotten a $5 full meal deal with brats or dogs, drink, and chips for five bucks? We were the best deal in town. So it was, it was a great weekend. So thanks to everybody and Parks and Rec and yeah, our first responders that probably, I don't know how many calls they got in, but yeah. probably way too many. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> update on me, I've had my first oncology re um, doctor's visit. My voice is crazy tonight because <clears throat> the pill I'm on dries everything up. Um, I think I mentioned last <clears throat> week, that, or last meeting, that um, the biopsy shared was that this cancer thrives on estrogen and hormones. And so um, my tongue feels like it's a dry, dry um, sponge, which isn't bad because it reminds me to drink. And sometimes I'm bad at that. But um, other side effects, if you see me burning up, I probably am with a great hot flash. But you might see me cuddled up in my blanket because I'm cold. So. 
you never know what I'm going to be. But I know I've met people that are not sure how to approach me. I told you at the last time that I shared what was going on with me. Um, I'm willing to talk about it. Um, I joke with the doctors. Um, I take each day at a time. Always have since we had Shay in 2009 start this process. Um, you're only guaranteed today. I don't know what's going to happen when I leave here. So why worry about it? Make it the best we can. So that's my principle. As things continue, I'll keep you abreast. Don't be afraid to ask if you have other questions. But um, the worst thing I wanted was all the rumors of people hearing different things. I want you to hear from me. So it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to hug me. It's okay to pray for me. It's okay, whatever. So um, I've had a few people call, and they don't even know how to broach it. And <coughs> so I do it for them. So um, I just thanks everybody for their support. And <clears throat> that's all we have. Do you have anything? I have one thing there. Okay. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Counselors, so in your packets tonight um, is a parking pass and a map uh, for Friday night's McFall Park dedication. And so um, if you look at the map, if you park in the northwest corner of the park, um, that, that will be the place. And so there will be reserved parking spots there for you and encourage you to come on out and participate. Starts at 6 o'clock, 6 to 6.30 for the ceremony, 6.30 to 7.30 or so for the reception. Um, and it should be um, guaranteed um, a, a beautiful evening. We'll see whether that plays out. Guaranteed. Big words. Alex and Rack must really have the connections. All informed council now that I uh, won't be able to attend this. Um, it's my anniversary, so I uh, want. Mm -hmm. I think my <laughs> partner will be, um, my husband will be very upset <laughs> if I don't. Okay, so we'll see everybody at seven. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and I will be just able to do the beginning. Okay. Oh, the part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's out yeah. there. Yeah.
go. Question to City Clerk, are we ready to go? Okay. Welcome to tonight's meeting of July 10th, 2023. Um, tonight we first start with the Economic Development Authority meeting, but first please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Justice for all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Welcome to the Westminster City Council meeting for July 10th, 2023. We thank you for coming and would like to remind all in attendance that our meetings are subject to the rules of decorum that are posted at the back of the room. We want to be sure that all feel welcome and remind all there are expectation that no attendee shall disrupt this meeting and that threats and intimidation are prohibited. Signs and placards are prohibited in the council chambers and all attendees shall remain seated in the seats provided, not in the aisles, nor shall the doorways be blocked. That brings us to consideration of minutes of April 24th, 2023. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the Janu or June 26, 2023 meeting as presented. Councilor. Um, Mayor. Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilors um, Emmons. Yes, we're doing need a, but Do we need a roll call? Yes, but just go ahead. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. The, dates, the date for the minutes was wrong. He read the date oh. for the council minutes. Yeah, I, I would uh, amend that to the uh, WIDA meeting for April 24, 24th, 2023. That's what I, is on my paper. Did I not read I, that? I read the wrong one. Oh, oh. All right. All those in favor of the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Roll call, please. Board Member Baker. Here. Vice Chair DeMott. Present. Board Member Evans. Present. Board Member Azadi. Here. Chairperson McNally. Present. Board Member Nirmella. Here. And Board Member Seymour. Here. Tonight we have a public hearing and a resolution. And do we have um, staff that wants to present anything, City Manager? No. no? Okay. Um, then I would open the public hearing. If there's anyone here to talk about this issue, come forward or did anybody sign up no one signed up to speak on this item if you didn't know you were supposed to sign up and want to speak stand up and come on down see no one i closed the public hearing <clears throat> and there is a resolution number 222 227 board member seymour thank you uh chair uh Move to adopt a resolution number 227, amending the appropriations for the 2023 Westminster Economic Development Authority, WIDA, budget reallocating $1,273,686 from the WIDA Reserve Capital Improvement Project account to the Westminster Economic Development Authority General Capital Improvement Fund transfer account to the city's GCIF. Transfers WIDA account the amendment of the budget will allow WIDA to transfer funds to the city. Subject to council approval, the city will then appropriate these funds to the GCIF, Westminster Urban Renewal Plan, Roadway Alley account to fund the construction contract with Hall Irwin Inc. and other construction related services such as restoration materials, testing and construction management services. Uh, Councilor Emmons, um, Board Member Evans, Evans. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resol Resolution 227. Is there any further discussion? Councilor, Board Member Baker. Yes, uh, I'd like to know the reason for us building this roadway. Mr. Burke, could you come forward, please? Certainly, John Burke, Economic Vibrancy Manager. Uh, Board Member Baker, he is happy to answer that question. As part of our uh, agreement with the Marzac Fine Foods and with many other developments in downtown Westminster, we are required to build those public infrastructures, such as all the roads, water, sewer that's out there currently. 
when we approved the sale of the million dollar property to 477 Find Holdings doing business as Marzek Food for half the valued price, I was under the impression that they could build, they could remodel the U.S. bank building there without any additional work on our part. So that would be mostly correct, but also in that same uh, motion that night that was identified in that memo that we would be responsible for the public infrastructure that serves not only Marzac, because yes, that was a half million dollar purchase and also probably a three to $4 million investment to adaptively reuse that old bank into now a grocery store. And so there is private investment going into that deal as well. And then this road actually serves not only Marzac, but the future condominium site and the vacant lot uh, that is to the southeast uh, there as well. Uh, we do have a tentative agreement for the northwest corner of this A1 block, but that's still pro probably two to three years away from being uh, built. Yes, I would say it's probably about a year and a half to two years before we start construction on the next okay. one with the developer. And do we have in any interest on the southeast corner of it? Not at this time, no. We've not actually marketed that <laughs> side to the, the general public or the developers at this time. Okay, but we have had the Davis Partnership look at it and evaluate it, haven't we? 100% yes. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Board Member Baker. No. Vice Chair DeMott. Yes. Board Member Emmons. Yes. Board Member Azadi. Yes. Chair McNally. Yes. Board Member Nirmella. Yes. And Board Member Seymour. Yes. The motion passes on a 6-1 vote. Mr. Frankel, do we have to have a motion to close this meeting, or may I close it since there's no other? Since that concludes the WIDA agenda, I think you can just close it, Madam okay. Chair. That concludes the uh, WIDA agenda for July 10th, and we will close that meeting and move into our City Council meeting, incorporating the roll call from the WIDA meeting, and that brings us to consideration of minutes of preceding meeting from June 26, 2023. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the June 26, 2023 meeting as presented. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of June 26, 2023. Is there any further discussion? Um, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to presentations. Mayor Pro Tem is going to do it since my voice is crackly tonight and you don't want to listen to me. Could I get whoever is here to accept the proclamation for uh, pre-trial probation and parole supervision week? Join me up front. Welcome. Go ahead and let you guys introduce yourself, starting with the judge. Jason Montine, presiding judge. Jesse Vilpondo, probation officer with the City of Westminster Municipal Court. Irma Gonzalez, the probation clerk. Tracy Ketchaw, probation officer. Thank you very much for being here and for the work that you do. I know reading through the notes, they give a lot of detail around the work that these folks do. If I recall correctly, it's about 435 cases last year that you did, give or take. Um, so... <laughs> Justice is a very important function of government, and so that starts from pre-trial to, you know, victims to people who are actually under trial and making sure that we deliver good justice has a lot of different pieces to it. So these folks obviously do very important work for the city and the folks that go through their offices, and so uh, recognizing them is important. I would encourage you to go read the details around it. They do give some statistics around the work that you folks do. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation. Whereas community corrections is an essential part of the justice system, and whereas community corrections professionals uphold the law with dignity while recognizing the right of public to be safeguarded from criminal activity, and whereas community corrections professionals are trained professionals who provide services and referrals for, um, for offenders and work in partnership with community agencies and groups, and whereas the community corrections 
professionals promote prevention, intervention, and advocacy, and whereas community corrections professionals provide services, support, and protection for victims, and whereas the theme for the 2023 pretrial probation and parole service or supervision week is stronger together. Now, therefore, I, Nancy McNally, Mayor of the City of Westminster, on behalf of the entire City Council and staff, do hereby proclaim the week of July 26th through 2020, or the 22nd as pretrial pro probation and parole supervision week. That's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> and call upon the people of Westminster to recognize and support the activities and efforts of our local community corrections professionals signed this 10th day of July, 2023, Nancy McNally, Mayor of Westminster. So, thank you. Um, at this time, we're going to move to public comment. The public comment portion of the meeting is an opportunity for the public to communicate with the city council. Each participant will be given no more than five minutes on any topic they choose. Public comment is not intended to be a back and forth discussion. <clears throat> if there is a public hearing scheduled for an item on which you wish to speak, please hold your comments until that public hearing is called. Tonight, there are two public hearings on the agenda. One regarding the fourth amend, amended PDP and the fifth amended ODP of the Green Lawn subdivision, and the second public hearing is one to authorize to execute a contract with Hall, Halloran and provide a supplemental appropriation for construction contract. I will ask City Clerk how many emails, voicemails, and who do we have signed up for tonight? We have two emails that were emailed to council and attached to the packet. We have zero voicemails this evening, and we have two people signed up. The first person to sign, signed up to speak is Karen Calavity. Welcome. Karen Calavity, 9940 Westcliff Parkway. Um, I want to bring up on Saturday, I did not attend the historic baseball game, but I did um, visit with Nancy, or Linda, her name is Linda, of the Historic um, Society here in Westminster, and I, I was on a tour of the some of the farms that Westminster owns, and it was really nice to see some of the open space up north. Um, and... Uh, there's a lot of nice things about Westminster. But I'm sorry to say, when I get a postcard like this in the mail addressed to me, um, my first thought is, what is the BS? What is the propaganda that I have to decode on this? This is about the water treatment plant. And, um, you know, it's got graphics of an eagle, it's got the mountains. It's got a picture of Mark Freitag. Um, and, you know, it talks about the water treatment plant, how great it is, and how, you know, it's not going to cost very much. They're saving $100 million. And I mean, you know, $100 million, that's what it should cost, not what it should save. Um, and then it goes on to talk about not more than 4.9% annual increases for 10 years and it's like well what happens after 10 years is that a balloon payment or does the increase stop but it also talks about the situation only being about a financial one that the only concern that people had with the with the water treatment plant was financial and that was a big concern and I still don't think it has been adequately addressed but there's also another concern there's an environmental concern um, this is not a state-of-the-art 
uh, water treatment plant that's being proposed. This is invoking eminent domain uh, on a large, nice site uh, that you're not supposed to use eminent domain unless there's no other alternatives. And there was never any alternatives looked at except for the ones that the consultant, you know, deduced that would, you know, not meet the needs of their plan. I mean, there's other consultants, there's other ways of doing this thing. And then again, with the picture of the bald eagle on this, we know now that there's a, a nesting pair of bald eagles in that area. And the response I got was, well, we'll wait till migration time to, to do the work. And it's like, that's nuts. I mean, migrating, eagles do migrate, but nesting pairs usually do not migrate. So we're really supposed to be taking into account that the special nature of that site. And it, it holds a nesting pair of, of bald eagles. It is a nice space. There's, there's prairie dogs. There's lots of wildlife over in that area. And the fact that we've just kind of gone ahead with a very expensive and very environmentally insensitive uh, water treatment plant really makes me angry, especially when it was a big subject for people. They, they wanted a recall on the, on the first batch of people who were proposing this. And it was a lot of people's thought that the next group of people in this city council were not going to approve that similar kind of water treatment plant. And it, it is not a well thought out situation and a very expensive situation that's going to encumber people for generations to come. And I, I still have a hard time believing that the best interest of Westminster was thought about when we did this kind of thing. Thank you. The next speaker is Tom Lampo. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. I'm here to pray for the city of Westminster. Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name, we invite you here to the city of Westminster. In Psalm 33, 9, it states, For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. You created it all. You've provided, provided a place for us, and you are always welcome here. I lift up all people to you. We need your spirit to come and be among us. We are living in a spiritual war, and we have no chance without you. Our enemy is all around us. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it states, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He's devouring your creation because truth is being hidden from us. Many times we don't even have a clue of what we are being deceived about. We go about our days and everything is normal. We've become accustomed to the muck and the mire when you have so much more to offer us. Isaiah 6, 9 describes us. It states, and he said, go and say this to the people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Our hope lies with the Holy Spirit. In John 14, 26, it states, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Send your Holy Spirit to all people. Open our eyes and our ears and give us understanding. Let us be aware of the deception around us. There are individuals the devil is using to move an evil agenda forward. The deception is so great that it has consumed our lives. We want peace. One last time, send your Holy Spirit to those who are attempting to destroy us to see if they will turn from their ways. If not, send us leaders who want good for mankind. In Psalm 75, 7, it states, But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. We can rest in the comfort that your truth is on the horizon and your judgment is following. In Jesus Christ's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys and have a nice night. Thank you. That's the last person I had signed up. Thanks. Um, in case anybody was here late, um, we have from 6.30 to 7 a sign up. If you didn't get signed up and would like to speak, let me know. 
Thank you. City Manager's report. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilors, and ladies and gentlemen, those watching online. Um, we'll go to the next slide. So a couple things to update everybody on. Um, first of all, just uh, got a special event coming up on Friday evening this week. Uh, so Westminster Center Park, um, which has been also referred to as Peter Pan Park, will be renamed McFall Park in honor of former city manager Brent McFall. Um, and uh, um, city manager McFall uh, was inspired by residents who asked for more park space. And so um, city manager McFall helped the city secure grant money to clean up the area to help it become the thriving park that it is today. Um, if you want to read more about uh, City Manager McFall's legacy, there's a link there which you can follow to do that, but would encourage the community to come out and um, attend the park dedication. It will be right across the street, um, I guess that way, uh, and uh, Friday night, 6 p.m., right at the pavilion, um, and uh, you know, look forward to um, honoring uh, the work that uh, City Manager McFall did on behalf of Westminster. So great event for our community. Um, the other thing that I'd like to highlight is um, Bike to Work Day um, was uh, a week before last. Um, we, the city of Westminster, uh, had a station there. We had 200 plus cyclists that stopped off at the city's station. Um, we were on the west side of New Sheridan Underpass. Um, and uh, you know, an opportunity to engage the community, pass out some um, uh, some swag, and uh, um, just have a good time engaging the community. But that's for folks that are riding that uh, um, trail uh, north and south. So a uh, great event there. Next slide. Some westy winds, um, and so um, great news um, for Jeffco Public Schools. Um, specifically, but uh, their financial oversight committee. Um, they've selected our policy and budget manager, John Presner, um, to uh, serve on their financial oversight committee. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a community volunteer opportunity for John and a big win for our organization with Jeffco Public Schools. And so we want to congratulate John on this achievement. And uh, um, he's a super, super smart guy and extremely sharp when it comes to all things budgets and finance. So he's the right person for this job. Um, next, uh, some residents um, uh, had a great time, as uh, mentioned earlier uh, this evening in the, uh, the pre-meeting, but 4th of July celebration. Um, about 4,000 residents showed up um, uh, to celebrate Independence Day. Um, you know, kudos, hats off to um, Parks, Rec, and Library, and then our uh, first responders, police and fire, and all the public works folks um, who helped um, to secure the site, set it up, um, and then make sure that everybody was well taken care of. We did, uh, I guess, about 7.15, the, uh, the, the thunderstorms and the lightning rolled in, and so we had to evacuate the place. They handled it professionally. We appreciate the community responding and listening and doing what they were supposed to be doing. We had about a two-hour pause and then executed fire uh, works that evening. And so um, a, great, uh, a great event to celebrate our nation's independence. Next slide. Some things to know. Inclusivity board meeting, uh, Wednesday this week, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Um, in the uh, CMO conference room here at City Hall. Uh, Top Taco, tickets are required Thursday, uh, July 13th, 6 to 10 p.m. That's at City Park. If you want to get tickets um, or learn more, please contact Leah Krumpholtz, and that's her um, email address uh, indicated on the slide. As I mentioned, Friday night, 6 to 7.30 p.m., uh, dedication ceremony for McFall Park. Uh, also, in combination with that, so it's really a, a twofer, you've got the McFall Park dedication and then neighborhood nights and movie in the park will be co-located on site. And so from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Uh, right there at McFall Park. And then uh, uh, our next meeting here in the city is the City Hall, or correction, City Council study session um, next Monday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, right here in Council Chambers. Next slide. Uh, information only items tonight, we had a strategic plan update, kind of a mid-year uh, mid update on uh, kind of where we're at on this year's strategic plan tasks. Next slide. 
And as always, encourage folks um, to reach out and talk to us, um, ask questions, raise your issues, raise your concerns, provide us your feedback, good ideas. Um, please uh, contact the city manager's office. Um, you can do that at 658-2006. You can email me directly at mfrytag at cityofwestminster.us. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, or ring our bell at next door. As always, we want to remain accessible, responsive, transparent, and accountable. But any questions, that's all I have this evening. I just wanted to make a comment the night of uh, the fireworks. Uh, whoever was handling communications, all you had to do was look at your Facebook. If you're a Twitter person, it, they were, it, it was constant. All we have to do is go out our back door to watch. So they, they told us when it was going to happen. We barely got out there in the first boom and took off. So whoever was doing all of that really kept the public um, knowing when those were going to be because the rumor mill was this is canceled, that's canceled, Broomfield was canceled, and, and neither of us were. So um, it was great communication to hear directly from us so that we knew what was going on. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. We'll pass that along. Anyone else? Thanks. That brings us to city council comments. Councilor Baker? Nope. Oh, That's my sorry. Line. Councilor Seymour. <laughs> Blocking you. Habit. Habit. Yeah. Habit. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just a, a recognition. Uh, last week, Adams County and Westminster uh, lost a hero. Um, Roger Gudenkoff was a man who affected many, many people in our city. He uh, and a group of his neighbors got together several years ago after there was a, uh, three students were shot at Random High School to form the uh, Neighborhood Action Group. He was part of the initial discussions uh, when Growing Home uh, was forming. Uh, through Rotary and uh, Roger's determination, uh, distributed over 10,000 computers to children in our schools. And because of his determination, um, over 12,000 students, children between the ages of zero and five in our community get a book every month. So uh, he will be missed. His services um, will be this Thursday at 1030 at Holy Trinity Catholic Church. Thank you, a great person. Anyone else? I just wanted to, to make a couple of clarifications. Um, <clears throat> this council didn't declare eminent domain for the water plant. That was done before we got here. And the money had already been spent and, by the people they paid. And um, that's just facts. Then, um, saying that no other sites were looked at, each one of us were asked where we wanted to look. And we gave our thoughts and ideas. We had some different ones on there than what had been looked at. Um, and for all the reasons we've all said at different times, for me, I can only talk for me, that um, there was never a site, including Semper, um, where we could do absolutely whatever might need to be done technology-wise or however otherwise to keep this city sustainable with water and get water to everyone except the site that was picked. We tried. I really thought one or two of the other sites would make it, but it was always what if, yes, but. It was never a clear cut that we could do what was in the best idea. And we don't know what's going to happen in 20 years. So we have to think outside the box <clears throat> and know that we have to be able to have this city set for water for the grand future. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that because those were two statements that were not actually factual. Um, that brings us to any other. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Potem. No, <clears throat> that's OK. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of quick things because I, I realize it's been a while since we meet, 
have met. Um, the mayor, myself, and Councilor Normella also went to the CML conference, which was really well done. And I know we also had uh, several staff members there. Um, it was, I thought, a very beneficial time. It's the first time that I've went in the five years that I've been on council. Um, prodded by the mayor to go to it, which I thank her, but I. It, I did think it was good. Um, and I wanted to specifically mention at that meeting that I know um, two legislators from the state legislature that were um, honored, which was one of them is um, Rachel Zenzinger, who is a senator for part of Westminster. And then um, Barbara Kirkmeyer. Uh, yep, Senator Kirkmeyer were both honored for fighting for local control with the housing situation um, with the governor's bill in 213. And I thought that was really good that, um, you know, they were honored by the different municipalities who uh, are part of CML to support their work there. Um, I know that also was mentioned, uh, I heard. I didn't get to go to the lunch where the governor was, but I know that he has some other ideas about housing. So it sounds like that that will continue to be the um, topic, which obviously is important for the uh, metro area. Um, but it seems like probably next legislative session we'll continue that that conversation. But I thought it was important to note their recognition because I do thank them both for their work in continuing to fight for local control, and I think they both understand that. Um, other quick things that I would say is I also would say good job on the 4th of July. Uh, if those who didn't get to go to Vintage Baseball, I did get to drop by that. That was great. Um, on Saturday, because I know the mayor was uh, holding down the fort at Vintage Baseball, I got to attend a ribbon cutting. Um, our Walmart over here off of 92nd in Sheridan has a community um, clinic now as part of their pharmacy where you can, and it's in partnership with, I think, Boulder County Health, where you can go and get rapid uh, HIV and other STD testing um, so that, you know, you could get on the path to recovery and, and understand your health situation. So that's actually a very good ad for the community for them to have that. Um, the pharmacist over there, if you ever get to meet him, he's a riot, and he's very excited about the work he does for the community. Um, I was there with the CEO of the chamber as well as Tr Commissioner Kraftthart from Jefferson County, and it was a good afternoon and, again, a good addition to our community. Um, lastly, um, I just learned about Roger here today, and, and I would like to just add that he, he was a great band. I served in Rotary with him. Um, the amount of passion that that um, human being brought into the world was um, – Bar none, he is a good person. And I think uh, if I think about what we heard at CML, it was a lot of uh, the, the theme was a lot around the things you control and making the best of it. So um, that is a human being that certainly did that with his time on this earth. And so um, it was an honor to get to know him. And that's it. Thanks. If I could. Sure. Uh, it's amazing how memory works. Uh, I remember the... Uh, assessment for locations for the new water plant differently. Uh, as I remember the report that was given by the supposed reassessment, second professional assessment, they did not look at any other sites beyond the Westminster Boulevard site, the Semper site, the MSC, and the alternate site. No other sites were considered. And when um, I suggested another site, uh, misinformation from city staff uh, frightened the council away from even considering that. And in hindsight, that was all bad information presented by the city staff. So I think the speaker had some very cogent points to make, and they should not be arbitrarily of the dismissed. Thank you. I, I would agree with you on the fact that memory is a funny thing, um, because I do recall that the sites that you mentioned aren't sites that were originally all necessarily part of the original Water 2025 plan. Um, so there were additional sites looked at. And the idea that we were frightened, I take objection to, and I've taken objection every time you've mentioned it, because I do not deal in fear. I deal in facts and looking at pros and cons and what is the best solution for the city moving forward. So I'm going to continue to object when you say things like we were frightened. I'm not a school child that is here who is frightened to be in this building. So um, 
you should think about how you approach things if you want to work with other people in, in uh, calling out people as frightened, malinformed, deceitful, lying, unless you can back it up with facts, I suggest maybe thinking about using different terms. Councilor Newman? I was going to say something rather similar. I, I do want to state that there were several rounds of review of different sites. Um, one before that the, the former council was able to look at and review and then that had community input in that process. And then the second with uh, several new sites and the site that uh, the two, I think there were two sites that were recommended by uh, Councillor Baker. Um, I definitely want to say that we don't feel that um, staff provided us with misinformation or that we were scared away. I think we all, um, the majority of us had a, um, or made the decision that those sites were inappropriate um, being located in areas where there were a lot of residents and, and neighborhood, um, and very tight neighborhood air locations. So um, just wanted to clarify that, that we were trying to focus on sites that were, um, that would work well for the whole community. Councilor? Okay. That takes us to consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem? Thank you, Mayor. I move to adopt consent agenda items 8A through 8D. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve items 8A through D. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor DeMott? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. <laughs> um, <laughs> Councilor Emmons? Yes. Councilor Azadi? Yes. Mayor McNally? Yes. Councilor Nermella? Yes. Councilor Seymour? Yes. And Councilor Baker? Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. That brings us to 10A. <clears throat> I will open the public hearing uh, <coughs> for um, to approve the fourth amended preliminary development plan and the fifth amended official development plan for lot one and lot two. Um, staff, do we have a presentation? OK. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Councilors. My name is Nathan Lawrence, Senior Planner with the Planning Division. As part of bringing this project before you, a staff agenda memo has been created and tonight's public hearing has been properly noticed. The, the agenda memo, tonight's presentation, and public notices are hereby entered into the public record. Next slide, please. Lot 1, Block 2 of the Green Lawns subdivision is bordered by West 92nd Avenue to the north, Pier Street to the east, West 91st Court to the west, and, reflections, and the reflections on 92nd Apartment Complex to the south. Semper Farm Open Space is, is located directly across 92nd Avenue to the north. Next slide, please. Approval of the fifth amended preliminary development plan and I'm sorry, the fourth amended preliminary development plan and fifth amended official development plan would allow for the development of 40 townhome units on, on two, um, two and a half um, acres of vacant land. Here is the project concept to orient new 92nd Avenue is located to the north. The project features full movement access from West 91st Court on the west side and right in, right out only access from uh, Pier Street to the east. Pedestrian access spans the site from east to west and north to south. On-site detention and amenity area and guest parking are located along the southern side of the property, bordering existing off-street parking for the adjacent apartment complex. The townhomes are oriented toward the surrounding streets and to the landscaped area to the south. The units feature rear-loaded garages that are accessed from an internal alleyway. Each unit will have direct access to the surrounding pedestrian uh, sidewalk network and a new multi-use trail segment that's along that's proposed along 92nd Avenue. Next slide, please. City Council previously approved the addition of multifamily land use to the site as part of the fourth amended PDP. At the time, a 40-unit multifamily project was proposed on the PUD zone property. 
this new proposal for a 40 unit townhome project at, at the same de development density requires the, the addition of the townhome land use to the PDP. Staff finds that the PDP amendment is in conformance with the suburban multifamily comprehensive plan de um, designation, which lists townhomes as a primary use. The neighboring apartments to the south were built to a higher density than the, the, the proposed project and the three-story scale of the townhomes is in keeping with the, the nature of the surrounding uh, area. This project re represents a key point of transition from a more auto-oriented development pattern to one that, that's becoming increasingly multimodal. So pushing the, the townhome units toward West Nice Second Avenue will, will help activate a future multi-use trail that will run the length of 92nd Avenue from US 36 to Wadsworth Parkway. Other setbacks on the property mirror those of the neighboring apartments and allow for the efficient design of un underground infrastructure. Access is located toward the rear of the site to minimize um, conflicts with, with traffic that's accessing 92nd Avenue. Given the unique site constraints and, and project goals, a number of ex exceptions from the multifamily design standards have been requested by the applicant. Staff directed the applicant team to orient the project toward the surrounding neighborhood to promote transit and walking and biking. In addition, the multifamily design centers were generally written for large greenfield projects and are often at odds with the unique layout and architectural requirements of small infill projects. Next slide, please. Staff found that the ODP is in conformance with all city codes, ordinances, and policies with exceptions to the multifamily design standards um, identified in detail. The guest parking area has been surrounded by dense vegetation, adding to the screening provided by an existing fence on the southern property line adjacent to the existing apartments. Low masonry walls have been located in between buildings to screen headlights and views into the rear alley from West 92nd Avenue. Um, the minimum overall site area landscape has been reduced from, from the, the required 40% to 34%, um, which allows for ad additional um, pedestrian access from each unit and for the provision of a robust internal uh, system of sidewalks. The landscape planting on the site has been provided in excess uh, of the quantities re required based on the 40% landscape requirement as co compensation. The traffic study that was required along with the ODP submittal found that impacts from the project are expected to be minimal and can be handled with existing infrastructure. Architecturally, the use of stone, stucco, and metal siding is compatible with surrounding buildings while adding a modern design expression. The corners of the buildings have been stepped down to, to reduce the, their overall scale and two varying design typologies help, help um, enhance the visual interest while maintaining overall architectural coherence. Next slide, please. The Planning Commission reviewed this application on, on May 23rd and voted unanimously, unanimously in favor of recommendation for approval. Next slide, please. Staff recommends holding a public hearing to review the proposed amended preliminary development plan and official development plan, and that the City Council approve the amended PDP and ODP with the finding that they meet the criteria set forth in sections 11.514 and 11.515 of the Westminster Municipal Code. Next slide, please. Staff finds that, that approval of these applications would meet the City Council's strategic plan goal of shared sense of community th through the provision of 40 new housing units that, that, that will be integrated into the surrounding community and the goal of robust infrastructure through the incorporation of, of thoughtfully designed infrastructure systems. And that concludes my portion of, of the presentation. The, the applicant, um, Mike Tolson with Point Consulting is here tonight um, and will um, ha and has a presentation to, to share with you as well. City staff members are also in attendance and are here to answer any questions after his presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome.
Keep it going. <laughs> Good evening. Can you hear me all right? Thank you for the introduction, Nathan. Um, if we get to the next slide, I will introduce the project team and let you know what we're trying to do here. Don't forget so, to introduce yourself. Sorry. Uh, Michael Tolleson. I'm with Point Consulting. So to introduce the project team, uh, ownership is Pierce LLC. They are represented by Brady Hyde, Jacob Bundy, and Bob Bowell. They are all in attendance tonight. Uh, the architect is Real Architecture. Uh, they are represented by Dave Burton, Kendall Goodman, and Rachel Fox. Uh, David and Rachel are here tonight. And then as for the civil engineering, landscape architecture, and surveying, that's Point Consulting. Uh, Mitch Shear, uh, myself, and Cameron Watson. Uh, Mitch Shear is here in addition to me tonight. And so the reason we're here is because our team has the goal to develop a two and a half acre vacant piece of land into 40 purchasable townhome units. Next slide, please. All right, site context. I know Nathan touched on a bit of this, but I figured I'd go a little bit more in depth on the direct adjacent uses since they had some influence on how we wanted to design our site. And so directly to the north is open space, more specifically the Farmers Highline Canal Trail, which has about eight miles of trail connections. Um, further north is single family. Uh, to the south and west are multifamily developments. And then to the east is commercial. Um, directly east is storage, then Costco, and then less than a half mile away is downtown Westminster. And so I think it's important to note all that just because with our project site, we see it as a good transition piece between the downtown core and some of the single family and you know, a bit more multifamily projects. And so that influenced how we wanted to design our buildings and site. Uh, next slide, please. So to begin describing our site, I'll go with circulation. And so existing roadways around the site are West 92nd Avenue to the north, Pier Street to the east, and West 91st Court to the west. Uh, with our project, we're proposing a private drive that will weave through the site. As you can see, it allows access to all six buildings and you know, the entrances are on the southern side of the site. And so with Pierce Street, we'll be doing a right in, right out. And then on West 91st Court, we'll be doing a full movement access. Uh, perks of this drive are that all the residents will have direct garage access from it. And it'll also, with it sweeping through the site, it reduces the amount of pavement we'll have to utilize to, you know, get everybody parked. Uh, with the drive, we have it 26 feet wide at the entrances and then the main east and west areas to accommodate emergency access, and then that will actually open up to 32 feet in the central area. Um, it's so wide because we're trying to fit water and sanitary in that area too, just so we can have all our infrastructure in one area. Um, in addition to the access, we also have parking on site. Uh, we have 13 guest parking spaces on the southeast corner, one of them ADA accessible, and then we have five more, uh, two of them between buildings one and two, and three of them between three and four. Um, we did this because, you know, we could have probably put them at the southern end of the site, but it really would have diminished the whole appeal of having a private park area, and there really wouldn't have been much space for residents to enjoy. And so we figured by putting them in between the buildings where it's gonna be less trafficked and less utilized, it would be more of a benefit to the residents. Um, as for pedestrian circulation, you know, our goal is to create an extensive, well-connected system that will allow residents access to the full site. And so to begin on the north end of the site, existing was an eight foot sidewalk and per direction of the city in coordination with them, we're actually removing the southern lane of West 92nd Avenue and we are increasing the size of that sidewalk to 10 feet to accommodate a 10 foot multi-use trail. Um, that's a part of the city's larger project of connecting downtown Westminster to Wadsworth with that 10 foot trail. And then north of that will be a tree line that will help buffer the trail from the road. Um, another main sidewalk we're introducing is on the southern edge of the site, beneath buildings three and four. That will also go to West 91st Court and Pier Street. And then in the middle of the site, we'll have one north-south sidewalk that connects to the two main ones. Um, we had it laid out like this because it will allow us to have private sidewalks going to each resident's uh, patio, which then will have direct access to their homes. And then Lastly, I will touch on the fact that we are improving the RTD bus stop on the north side of the site from a bench to a full shelter. Next slide, please. So landscaping. The intent with our design on the landscape is to create a low water use design that also has seasonal interest. And so we're achieving that by providing native and adapted plants that 
our evergreen perennials, just try and have a good variety for the residents. Um, notable features are is the detention pond on the southwest corner of the site that is designed to handle all major storms and you know convey water safely. Um, I'll get more into the private park area in the next slide. And then I do want to note that we take good efforts to uh, screen headlights on the main east and west drives with 30-inch uh, screen walls and dense planting just so any headlight glare is mitigated going into 92nd Avenue. And so if you will go to the next slide, um, I'll get into some of the amenities. And so what we're looking at here is a zoomed-in area of the private park we're proposing. And so it's just south of Building 4, and it's in between the guest parking and the detention pond. And so with this area, um, you know, our intent was to create a space that had multiple different uses. That way we can kind of encourage interaction between the residents and create a better community. And so some key features are sodded areas. And so the main one is south of the sidewalk. Um, that's meant for more active recreation. And then we have a smaller one on the north side that will be morally intended for residents who have dogs. You know, there'll be an area to take them out and that way any, you know, pet damage could be mitigated and maintained more easily. Um, along with that, um, just east of the sod area on the south, we are proposing a stamped concrete patio. Um, along that east side will be seating with an overhead pergola. And then further south, we are proposing a seat wall, fire pit and grill area. And then e west of that, we're doing a decomposed granite area large enough to suit, you know, cornhole or horseshoe or what have you. And then other features to note are that we are trying our best to screen this area from the parking. So we're gonna have dense evergreen plantings, grasses, shrubs, just everything we can just to kind of create a more inclusive space where you're not seeing cars and all that. And then one more item to note is that on the far south end of the area, we have a swale running through there and that'll direct all the storm water from the parking lot to the detention pond. And so with that, we're lining it with grasses, perennials, just trying to make it look as aesthetic as we can. And then to touch on the building amenities, each unit will have a covered patio porch area. Um, the second level of all units will have a balcony. And then the end units on all the buildings will have a third level balcony. And then a number of them also have rooftop decks, but I'll get into that on the next slide. So if you go to the next one, please. All right, floor plans. So all the buildings will have similar floor plans from top to bottom. So I'm just showing you examples of buildings three and four here. The, seven unit buildings. And so on that first floor, as you can see, there's the two end units. On the first floor, they will have a study and a bathroom. And then on the interior units, it'll be a bedroom and a bathroom. And then when you move up to the second floor, that's where some of the main amenities are. So the dining, kitchen, living room, and then a half bath, and then as well as uh, balcony access. On the third floor is a master bedroom, master bathroom, guest bedroom and guest bathroom. And so all these buildings will average two to three bedrooms. And then with the roof decks, buildings three and four will have five of them. The end units will not as we're trying to step down and provide articulation. And then with buildings one and two, uh, half of them will. The interior ones had to get minimized so we can make sure all of our utilities fit. So those don't have them either. And then for buildings five and six, the middle three will have them. So if you could go to the next slide, I will get into some of the materials. Nathan touched on this, uh, three primary ones. We're doing a stucco, we're doing stone, and then we're doing a corrug vertical corrugated metal siding. And so with the stucco, we're gonna have two different colors. One is a green color and one's a navy blue. And then stone will be tan and all the siding will be a brighter copper color. And then all the secondary elements you know, railings, awnings, downspouts, those will all be painted black. Next slide, please. So now we'll get into some of the elevations. Um, this is the north one as seen from 92nd Avenue. And so as you can see with the buildings, there's a lot of articulation in the roof plane. We have canopies that come out for balconies and the patio. And the main intent of this was to kind of soften the transition from the right of way sidewalk to the buildings just so they're not, you know, in your face. And then with these first two buildings here, buildings one and two, they will have the green stucco color. Next slide, please. East is very similar to one with the exception that it has the blue stucco. And again, you know, a lot of articulation with the balconies, patios, etc. Next slide. 
South elevations, very similar to the east, just a couple extra units on it. These are the seven unit buildings. And then on the final, next slide is the west. So these will look very similar to the east ones. We want to create a cohesive design with this site. And on the next slide is the final image I have for you. This is a 3D rendering of what we're imagining this site to look like. This is seen from West 91st Court and West 92nd Avenue. And so this helps paint a better picture of, you know, what the site could look like and what our overall goal is. And yeah, that's what I have for you. And thank you for your time. Thank you. At this time, does council have any questions for either staff or our developer? Councilor Namal? Um, well, one, I just have, well, one question, one, uh, one comment. One, I'm just really excited to see uh, the improvements that are happening on 92nd Avenue and this developer embracing those and incorporating them into the design, um, including the bus stop. So thank you. Um, so one, the only question I have is probably for Mr. Klein. Um, it's the right in, right out onto Pierce Street. I know there's only 40 units, but um, the design of the right in, right out, um, are we confident that I have seen this so many times where we have those right in, right outs, and, we, and that's the only signal to go west on 92nd, to get to go west on 92nd. So I can imagine a lot of people not really following the right in, right out suggestion. Good evening, Heath Klein, transportation engineer. Thank you, Councillor Nermella. The right in, right out is needed because in the peak hours, there's just too much uh, stacking in the northbound left turn for eastbound or westbound 92nd and even the through lanes. Will it be adhered to at all times? Uh, we will be signing it. It is designed to be a right in, right out, but I cannot promise that uh, people will always obey that. Uh, 91st court, the full movement that we talked about, you can turn left there and there are gaps. The nearest uh, <clears throat> signal on the west side is at Wadsworth Boulevard. So there are some gaps, especially when you get the uh, signal at 92nd and Pierce to stop the westbound traffic. And right now, based on our traffic report, there is not a ton of vehicles that are going to be making that. <clears throat> so yes, we are comfortable that this is a safe uh, design. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, Councilor Emmons? So Councilor Nermella, I'm piggybacking off yours because that was my question. Um, are we going to improve Pierce Street to have a median so people don't make a left because it's gonna happen? At this point, we don't. We don't have any raised median along Pierce from 92nd right. yeah. down to... Is there any plans so. that w if this was approved that we would even talk about that? We can talk about it. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have to evaluate that. If it does become a, a major issue, then yes, we can place a raised median there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baker? Yes. Uh, so 92nd is... Uh, a combination of three lanes in each direction? At this, there is three lanes eastbound at this location. And throughout the, throughout the corridor, yes, it bounces between two lanes in each direction to three lanes in each direction. Our downtown mobility study did take a look at the traffic volumes and had determined that from Westminster Boulevard west to Wads Boulevard and Wads Parkway that we can accommodate a two lane, uh, a four lane facility. So two lanes in each direction with auxiliary right turn lanes where needed. Okay. And it was, I mean, the city that asked this really developer to take the third lane? Yes. And uh, so it is in conformance with that downtown mobility study. We are asking that we install right now the 10 foot multimodal trail. The downtown Westminster study did call out for an essential eastbound raised bike lane <clears throat> that would take up nine feet from the back of curb. And then we would have a eight foot 
sidewalk after that. We right now, <clears throat> since we don't have the rest of the infrastructure, we're taking advantage of the development here and we're getting a 10 foot multimodal trail. And we'll have to look at a larger CIP project to bring the downtown mobility study to fruition. Okay. In all of the previous incarnations of this, because this is what, a fourth amendment had, I mean, the city asked for the developer to take that third traffic lane. I'm not sure the, I know that the one just previous to this, yes, we were looking to have the third lane removed as well. But you're not sure on the uh, previous? On the previous two, no. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Did people sign up for a public hearing or are they, how many yes. do we have? I have two people signed up for public hearing. The first speaker is Brian Albright. Welcome. Thank you. Brian Albright, 9205 Lamar Street. I basically have 92nd Avenue as my backyard. I've been there for 20 years, seen all the changes, seen the increase of traffic. My concern is taking away this third lane down there. They spoke and said that uh, they don't think there's going to be very many people heading west out of there to the left, okay? They never said anything about people going east, which you're asking now, you take away that merge lane is basically what it is, like you have out here mm -hmm. in, on the north side. You're, you're having people turn directly into oncoming traffic from a dead stop. Two times during the day, we all have it. Sun in your eyes in the morning, sun in your eyes in the evening. You know, people traveling in the morning may not see people turning right. Same, you know, same goes with people coming from the west in the evening. They may not see them turning, you know, or coming at them. To me, it's a ridiculous option to take away something that you guys put in there as a purpose to help people safely transition into traffic and to, tra you know, to transition out of traffic. I just don't believe it's safe. And one injury, one life, it's not worth it. I travel it, my wife travels it, other loved ones, other friends. We have friends that live there in those apartments, that that's how they get to the highway. I just don't. That's my only concern with this whole project is taking away that little little bit of that lane because it's, to me, it's a, a traffic hazard. Thank you. The next speaker I have signed up is John Palmer. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, all. A uh, couple of quick things. I think we need a clarification. All the documents I've looked at claim this property to be 2.49 acres. They're projecting it as 2.5. I know that's not a lot, but legally that is a lot. So we need clarification or correction on that. <clears throat> Next, a couple of quick questions. I didn't hear anything about PLD for this property. Is there public land dedication? And if so, where's it at? If not, what are they rendering to the city in lieu of? <clears throat> Next question, what about the overhead power lines that run along 92nd? Will they be undergrounding those? Whose responsibility is that? Because that's part of code now on developments. Will these units be solar, re solar ready or EV ready? Didn't hear anything about that. And by solar ready, I don't mean just having a roof. I mean, will they be solar ready? Never heard if these are going to be for sale or for, for rent units. <clears throat> and I know this doesn't really have a lot to do with what we're talking about here, but if I could get city slide number two up. Can we do that? Number two. There we go. With the signage you see there on the right, now, city, city clerk, did you forward those pictures? Those pictures were taken this evening on my way here. You can't see a date, 
a time, the, uh, whatever the code is, I can't think right now what that code is. I think we can do a little bit better job here. Now, I don't know when these pictures were taken, but it couldn't have been more than 10 days ago. I can't believe the weeds grew that much in 10 days. If they did, why didn't the developer come in and make it so it's more transparent to the community what's going on there? <clears throat> and as addition to that, why is the planner for this not looking at the big picture and checking up on this? And, and I say that not just of this development, but moving forward, we need to either have an addendum to the sign code or have some kind of clause in there regarding to the placement of that sign other than it needs to be on the, the property. Yes, it is, but it's not legible to anybody driving by. I had to get out of my car and take those pictures from the sidewalk. <clears throat> now, as an example, just here recently, a month ago, we had a hearing about the Davies Locker, the 8835 property. They had three signs posted over there. They were well off of the ground so that we wouldn't be looking at this same situation. And it's not just today it's weeds, but how about this winter when it snows? If you've got that sign at ground level and we get a foot of snow where it drifts against them, the community and the public's not aware of what's going on. So we really need to do a better job with that. Okay. Uh, I think those were my main questions as far as the PLD, the power lines, the solar questions, and, and are they for sale or for rent units? Excuse me? Oh, I'm not hearing anything. And will there be HOA dues, and are any of them ADA accessible? I see we have handicapped parking, but are the units actually ADA accessible? And will they be uh, lead solar, or excuse me, lead construction where, where everything's low in or low, low power? So if we could get those questions answered, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last person I had signed up. Is there anyone in the audience that didn't get signed up? Seeing none. Yeah, I, I, I didn't sign up. Um, but I have some name, please. Uh, Karen Calavity, 9940 West Cliff Parkway. I do drive along 92nd quite a bit, and I didn't even see the, the signs for this project. Um, yeah, I, I guess if there's 40% impervious or landscaping required, and it's only 34%, I, I do get concerned about that because um, I don't really think that it's in anybody's best interest to have more concrete versus less. Concrete and asphalt, these are all heat island effect surfaces. Even rock um, radiates heat. And, um, and I, I just hate to see this type of urban development in Westminster where we're just focusing on concrete and impervious um, surfaces. That's not good. Uh, it doesn't keep things cool. It doesn't allow water to permeate. And I, I really think we need to stick to, if, the, if it's required to have 40% pervious coverage, I don't see, I mean, I know why they're doing it. The more units they can pack in, the more money they make. But as far as helping the overall environment, it really seems that we should be sticking to some of the, the regulations, some of the codes that apparently are requiring 40% pervious coverage. We just don't need more asphalt and concrete. That, that doesn't help our environment. Thank you. City Attorney Frankel, would it be okay to call a brief recess and then come back to all this? Absolutely. Okay. Um, five minutes, we'll be back.
Are we ready? <clears throat> we are back to the public hearing, and we've had everybody speak. Um, my question to staff and to the developer, um, we've had several questions <coughs> asked by public. Um, do you wish to address them? or? Come on up. Hi, do you have any specific questions or just all the ones asked? Um, to take the one by one I, tried to, I tried to write them all down. So we had the uh, point or the 2.49 acre over 2.50. We had, <clears throat> um, is, is the overhead power going under? Are they solar ready? Are they for sale or for rent? You heard about the sign that we'll have to deal with about <coughs> weeds. Is there an HOA and our units ADA? Thank you for that. <coughs> and PLD. <coughs> Thanks. Um, I can speak to the 2.49. Um, in my presentation, I said 2.5 just to save on some words. It is on the ODP 2.4961 acres. Um, and I'll let Heath Klein talk about the undergrounding, and then I believe we can call up the, uh, the, the, the developer to talk about the EV, the solar charging, um, the HOA, and the rent versus market. And then we had, <clears throat> I don't know if Heath or whoever, but they're taking that merging lane and using it as a full blast lane, yes. that concern. So I think that's all that I have written down. If somebody else has some others, speak up. Good evening, Heath Klein again. <clears throat> so the overhead, that is a requirement of our Westminster Code to have all the overhead electric undergrounded by the development. The city actually did partner with Excel and use some 1% funds to get the three-phase power already undergrounded. <clears throat> so what we see out there currently are the poles left for street lights and for cable, and it's the power that's powering the street lights. This development will be removing those <clears throat> and in fact installing a few more street lights west of 91st Court as part of the, uh, their development. Okay. So that will be gone. The uh, concern with the lane removal. <clears throat> so sometimes when you add additional lanes you get additional speeding and it can increase your accidents so what we are doing is we're trying to right size our roadways and we're looking at what it wants to what we need to carry and to improve the safety mr albright is correct there's been several accidents and i believe his property has been <clears throat> a victim of several of these accidents so right there Right now, if you're eastbound 92nd and you pass the Farmer's Highline Canal and you go, it widens out. So actually, one of the accidents was due to somebody kind of racing around them. So by narrowing the roadway, it does actually increase the safety. And if you think about 112th Avenue, right now that's a four-lane facility and we have several uh, right turns that enter that that travel lane, 92nd east of Raleigh is the same the same condition. A lot like at King Street, you're turning directly into uh, one of the lanes of 92nd Avenue. 72nd Avenue corridor is the same, two lanes in each direction, not always having an auxiliary right turn lane or the uh, acceleration lane. Can I ask a follow-up because sure. it's yeah. on the on the <clears throat> traffic? Because I know that there's been. Um, a couple of times in my five years that people have addressed concerns about that specific area on 92nd and having accidents. We've had folks visit us after accidents. Yep. Um, so just trying to understand like how this goes. So you, you make these changes like if we see an increase and we see that this is actually having a negative effect from what you know you anticipate, like how do we judge that and keep our, our finger on the pulse of that and you know what would the remedy be I mean is there ever a circumstance where we're like this was the wrong move and go back the other way like because you know I sh <clears throat> I trust you and your judgment and your your knowledge of this but I also understand the concerns of the community and just driving that road and seeing how people drive anymore I understand their their concern 
Yeah, so if we did see a, as Mr. Albright brought up, if we see an increase in right turn accidents because they're turning into what we call the number two lane, uh, the, the closest to the south side of the street, then yeah, we may have to uh, go back and make a decision to make that an acceleration, a combination of an acceleration lane and the right turn lane as it is now. Because there isn't a third lane um, about 100 feet east of 90, or Pierce, because it actually narrows down to two lanes there. So there is an acceleration lane when you turn off of Pierce and start heading eastbound, but we go down to two lanes, then we widen again at Costco, then we widen again in front of downtown. And the downtown mobility study does talk about reducing those. So in the future, when we start to see development along the downtown uh, portion, we are going to be removing a lane from that as well. But <clears throat> to your question directly, <coughs> yes, we'll, we'll watch the accidents. Talking about that, for westbound, we did an improvement to the north side of 92nd by reducing the lane <clears throat> there from Eaton to Westminster Boulevard and then from Westminster Boulevard over to Ingalls to to help uh, the racing that those three lanes, once you get that there, there's a tendency for people to try to race around. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I guess the other question I have and, you know, and I've not asked this before and I haven't really seen us do this, but as far as like communicating to the people in those neighborhoods that there's going to be that shift when they, you know, what they're driving out of the neighbor into neighborhood into, because they wouldn't necessarily see that if they're not on that street and they may be very used to, coming out of that community and not, you know, coming into the lanes being a certain way. So how do we, you know, kind of educate people above and beyond to make sure that their habits don't cause, you know, um, accidents, a, basically? That's a good question and suggestion. I, I can, I'll, I'll talk with my staff about potentially getting flyers out to the apartments that are there on 91st Court so that they understand it. It's a stop condition, so we can't really say yield to uh, vehicles because it is a stop condition. But by getting maybe a flyer out to the residents, that could help greatly. Yeah, and I just think back to one of the other ones that I had a lot of concerns, like when we did the changes on 100th and Sims, uh, I, and I heard it from my community, there's, you know, you're just used to it. You drive it for 20 years, and it's always that way, and I think we have a lot a lot of long time people in those communities. So whatever we could do, I think would just be an extra good value to our community. Yep. Thank you. I just have to chime in because when we try to leave Costco via 92nd um, and we don't, we can't go in that one lane very long because we have to get over all of the lanes to get into the turn lane to go down Harlan. So, um, I agree. It, it's a dilemma. I hope we pay close, close attention to it because I know how scary it is for me, even having a lane trying to get across um, during Costco runs. And, and that can back up 10, 15 cars because it if, you're, if I'm the lead needing to get over and know that, I can't go to the very end and squeeze in because I've got to get over two more lanes plus get into the the left-hand lane. So it, it is on a wing and a prayer, usually when I go to Costco's. Anyone else? Or did you have anything Mayor. else? No. Oh, Councilor Azadi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what was the timeline for this project, roughly? To be constructed? Yeah. That would have to be answered by the developer. I, I don't know that. Thank you. Can the developer answer <clears throat> Councilor Azadi's question? Hi, Mike Tolleson, Boeing Consulting. Uh, to answer your question, I guess it depends how quickly we can get through construction documents, but we're hoping to begin construction in 2023. And then roughly when? Uh, let me think about this one. So say we get CD approval and a few, I guess, September, October, breaking ground. Um, as of, for, of, of next year? 2023. Oh, of, of this, of this year, year. Yep. to break ground. Yeah, and then as for duration, I, I can't give you a, 
good answer in that one. So the reason why I'm asking city manager, maybe, you know, this concern of this lane, if we can actually, you know, how we've done this for some topics where we put a pin in a future meeting, just so we don't lose sight of this, you know, it's, it's, it might be easy to forget that we've asked for a follow-up, but if we can keep a close eye on this from a statistical standpoint and bring it back to council at a specific future time. So I know we don't know when this will be done, but it would be good to revisit this. And while you're here, did you want to answer any of the other questions? Absolutely. <clears throat> Solar ready? So that is not something we've looked into, but um, you know, we're doing all electric buildings and you know, if that's something that we further discuss in the construction document phase, that's something that we can easily provide a hook up to the top and let the owners decide if that's something they want to do. And uh, for sale or for rent? For sale. Um, HOA? Yes. Um, HOA, will, all of the landscaping will be in an HOA tract and owned and maintained by it. And you, any units ADA? Yeah, so with this project, we're adhering to the American Disabilities Act. Um, we have, of the 40 units, 32 of them are ADA accessible. Okay. Councilor Numella? I just had a follow-up to Councilor Azadi's request for follow-up. <laughs> um, I would just ask that, I mean, Perhaps there's just also um, some education on just, for example, we've already installed the improvements at Ingalls and 92nd <laughs> on the north side of, um, of the road with us, you know, doing a similar change. So, and that was after we lost a life at, at that intersection. And so um, if there's, that or any other locations, um, any other locations in the community where we've already installed or done something similar, um, perhaps that can also help instead of just relying on this one location. Councilor Emmons. Thank you. I, I'm taking notes, so I'm not sure if it was answered. Um, public land dedication. Oh, uh, we are doing a fee in lieu. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, I don't have the number for you at the, on hand. I'd have to look at the uh, documents. May have missed in your presentation. Um, how many parking spaces total? So with all of the units have two internal ones, minus four on the north side. And then we have 18 guest parking spaces. And so we are meeting city requirements with parking. And then the question on the, the park that you were describing, um, my question is, is there any way that we can, I, I'm sure you have it scientifically in the spot that you do, is there any way that we could shift it a bit so that you could split the parking? Because that's a really long walk from one end to the other. And especially if it's ADA compliant, <laughs> that's really long distance. Yeah, and so with this site there are multiple constraints and we had to, you know, make some sacrifices and basically design we came up with is really tied in everything we're doing. And I guess the issue that, that would be with shifting it is that the site wants to drain to the Southwest. And so, you know, making that our low point seems like the best option for us, just don't want to fight grade and make extra construction work. And yeah, just due to that, it just seems like the best option to keep parking in one area, the tension on another area and, just make sure everything flows to the right places. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Newmel? Um, the 18 spaces that you're providing in addition to the garage parking spaces, is that above or just meeting our code? Meeting code. Okay. You know, I, it's a lot of parking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we had a comment from uh, the public regarding just the overall pavement on the site. And um, that's just something for us to think about because we're requiring a lot of parking on site. Thanks. Anything else? Do you have anything further you want to share? I can answer that uh, final comment about just the 34% landscape versus 40. Um, you know, as mentioned, with the 
uh, zoning on this, trying to fit density versus landscape and routes. You know, there's a lot going around. And, you know, we made that sacrifice in the landscape area, but it's not like we're just taking that impervious area and throwing it off site. You know, the more impervious we get, the more we have to size our detention pond and make sure we can hold that water accordingly. So it's being accounted for. And, you know, I agree, more landscape, the better. I'm, I'm always for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else from staff? <clears throat> okay. Um, it is 8.31, <clears throat> and I will close the public hearing. And that moves us to A2, a motion. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the fourth amended preliminary development plan and fifth amended official development plan for lot one, block two of the Green Lawn subdivision filing number one plan unit development. This recommendation is based on the finding that the amended preliminary development plan and amended official development plan are generally supported by the criteria set forth in sections 11-5-14 and 11-5-15 of the Westminster Municipal Code. Councilor Seymour? Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass item A2. Is there any further discussion? I just wanted to say um, I applaud the landscape. Um, one of the first times I've seen water sensitive stuff come and share with us and I think that's terrific. Um, the only thing I would just lay out there because it's happening down in downtown, <clears throat> when you don't have dog runs or spaces just for the dogs, um, downtown they come out, go on the sidewalk level um, plants that are there, and plants can't live on urine. So um, they're dying, and they're constantly having to be either replaced or they look horrible, and the smell's horrible. So I just share that because um, that's just what animals are going to do if um, there's animals that are going to be around there. And um, I don't like what's been happening downtown, but it is what it is. And even if they have a little bit of a raised bed so that the dog has sort of the height of a fire hydrant to go on, they're not hurting the plants. Otherwise, um, all of your effort to have beauty, beautification with these plants um, is going to just die. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councilor Nermella. Yes. Councilor Seymour. Yes. Councilor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. The motion passes on a 6-1 vote. That brings us to item 10B. Um, I will, it is 8:34. <clears throat> I will open the public hearing. Do we have staff report? Okay. Do we have um, anyone else that wants to speak on it? There was nobody signed up to speak on this item. Okay, and we, we don't have anybody else that would talk. Okay, seeing um, no one, um, I will close the public hearing at 834. And that brings us to motion B2. Councillor Seymour. Thank you, Mayor, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize the city manager to execute a construction contract with Hall Irwin, Inc., for the block A1 alley in downtown Westminster in the amount of $1,042,336 plus a 15% contingency in the amount of $156,350 for a total not to exceed an amount of $1,198,686. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass item 10B as in boy two. Is there any further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem. Roll call, please. Councillor Azadi. <coughs> yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nomella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Y yes. And Councillor Emmons. Yes. Uh, the motion passes on a 6 1 vote. Thank you. And B3 is a revised motion that was sent to your emails. Councillor Seymour. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to pass Councilor's Bill Number 34 on first reading, providing for a supplemental appropriation of funds in the amount of $1,273,686 for the 2023 budget of the General Capital Improvement Fund 
WRP Roadway Alley Capital Project. This appropriation will cover the construction, page two of five contract with Hall Irwin Inc. totaling $1,042,336 plus a 15% contingency fee in the amount of $157,000. $156,350 and another construction relate and other construction related <coughs> services such as restoration and materials testing and construction management services totaling $75,000 and correcting the typographical error in the attached account table reflecting the current budget is $139,081 and the revised budget should read $1,412,776. Councillor Emmons. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass Councillor's Bill number 34. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. And Councillor Azadi. Yes. The motion passes on a 6 1 vote. That brings us to item 10 C1, Councillor's Bill 35. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to pass Councilor Bill number, or Councilor Bill 35 on first reading, amending Title VI, Chapter 7 of the Westminster Municipal Code to eliminate the dog license requirement. Uh, Councilor Emmons. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass Councilor's Bill number 35. Is there any further discussion? This was the thought of Councilor Baker. Roll call, please. Councillor Normella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. And Mayor McNally. Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. That brings us to Resolution 19. Uh, Councillor Emmons. I move to adopt Resolution Number 19, revising the City Council's <coughs> rules and regulations. Uh, Councillor Seymour. Second. It's been moved and seconded to... Adopt resolution number 19. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. And Councillor Nermella. Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. That brings us to item 10E. Uh, adopt resolution number 20. I don't know who's first. Go ahead. <laughs> Councillor Seymour. Move to adopt resolution number 20, authorizing the application for congressionally directed funding for the Federal Parkway Multimodal Improvement Project. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 20. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Baker? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Councilor Azadi? Yes. Mayor McNally? Yes. Councilor Nermella? Yes. And Councilor Seymour? Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. That brings us to adopt resolution number 21. Councillor Seymour? Move to adopt resolution number 21, authorizing the acceptance of congressionally directed funding for the Federal Parkway <coughs> Multimodal Improvement Project. Uh, Councillor Emmons? Yeah, a second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 21. Is there any further discussion? I do have a quick question. <laughs> yeah. Quick question for staff. Um, I may have missed it, but does this improve sidewalks as well as roadway? Because this area Mr. Blass, is could you come on up and needed. answer the question? Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council. My name is Seth Plass. I'm a Capital Projects Administrator. Um, this project's, uh, this corridor, Federal Parkway, between 120th and 122nd is kind of been piecemealed over over time with mm -hmm. developments and a CDOT project at the 120th intersection. So some of the sidewalks are, are built and there are gaps that this project will complete. Okay, perfect. That's and in addition, there will be um, connections to the Big Dry Creek Trail. Wonderful, thank you so much. Roll call please. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. And Councillor Baker. Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. That brings us to item 10E <clears throat> adopt resolution number 22. 
Councillor Seymour? Move to adopt resolution number 22, authorizing the city manager to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Westminster and the Colorado Department of Transportation pertaining to the receipt of $3 million from the state for the Federal Parkway Multimodal Improvement Project. Councillor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass or adopt resolution number 22. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Seymour, did you have something? Nope. Councillor Numella? I just want to say how excited I am because I drive this every day and that we were able to get um, some funds uh, well exceeding our match. So very happy that staff was able to achieve this. Absolutely. Um, roll call, please. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. That brings us to item 10E. Four. I move to authorize the payment of $750,000 to the project as part of the local agency match funding requirement. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, authorize item 10E4. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> Councilor Azadi? Yes. Mayor McNally? Yes. Councilor Nermella? Yes. Councilor Seymour? Yes. Councilor Baker? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott? Yes. And Councilor Emmons? Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. That brings us to 10F1. Councilor Emmons. Thank you. I move to authorize the city manager to execute a second amendment intergovernmental agreement with the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District doing business as the Mile High Flood District in the amounts of $350,000 for preliminary design of the Shaw Heights Tributary Drainage Project. Councilor Seymour. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass uh, council, uh, item 10 F1. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. And Councillor Azadi. Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. That brings us to item 10 G1. Councillor Emmons. Thank you. I move to authorize the city manager to execute a contract amendment with Alpine Civil Construction Incorporated in the amount of $1,299,398 plus a contingency in the amount of $130,000 for a total authorization not to exceed $3,385,153. When combined with the original contract for phase one to perform construction services for the Benton Street Roadway and Utility Construction Project Phase Two. Councillor Seymour? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve um, item G ten G one. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Baker? Yes. Uh, do we have any <coughs> interest for the properties adjacent to Benton Street? I know after basically Schnitzer left. That was the last uh, interested party, unless we have some more. Uh, great question, sir. So this project will frame those D blocks of downtown for those next in developments for office space. So the answer right now is absolutely no uh, direct interest, uh, but these will be marketed heavily for future office. And this Thank project you. will help us frame exactly where that property will be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. And Mayor McNally. Yes. The motion passes on a 6 1 vote. That brings us to item 10, G2. Councillor Emmons. Thank you. I move to authorize the city manager to execute a <coughs> contract amendment with the Alfred Bench. Sure and company in the amount of $45,204, plus a contingency in the amount of $15,000 for a total authorization not to exceed $305,770 when combined with the original contract for phase one to perform construction, administration, and inspection services for the Benton Street Roadway and Utility Construction Project Phase 2. Councilor Seymour? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve item 10 G2. Is there any further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem? No. Oh. Okay. Roll call, please. 
Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. And Councillor Nermella. Yes. The motion passes on a 6 1 vote. That brings us to item 10 H1. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to authorize the creation of a full time temporary wellness court case resource navigator position within the Westminster Municipal Court to be funded through December 31st, 2024, by State of Colorado Criminal Justice Early Intervention Grant Award. Councilor Emmons? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve item 10 H1. Is there any further discussion? Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the judge and the people who work at the court for continuing to look at innovative ways to address the needs of our community as far as justice services are concerned. So I know there's a lot of work going into the different kind of courts, and I think that's a better approach for us to do to figure out ways to kind of break some of those cycles. So I appreciate this and look forward to you continuing your work. Councilor Nabella? I also wanted to echo that and thank the... Um, thank you to Jason for looking at this. And um, I, one question I have for you is um, when we are looking at this as a temporary position, how do we, you know, it talks about like we're looking at the success, but I think this is something we'll need for a long time. So how are we going to measure that? Welcome. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Uh, thank you, Councilor Namella. So we have different metrics that we're going to look at with this individual should Council approve the position. Uh, for instance, number of individuals served, um, what the particular needs of those individuals were and what resources they were connected to. So really at the beginning, we're going to start by building a data set. Right now, we're, we're starting from scratch essentially, but um, to also one of the tasks that this individual will have is to develop a uh, list of resources that are available. And so another way that we're going to gauge success is what were the resources that were identified, which resources were individuals connected to, what was the outcome of those connections. And so as if this position progresses forward, what we're going to be looking at are, are those sort of factors and then uh, building up essentially that data to to determine the success of the program. That's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, aside from that, we'd also be looking through the wellness court at our graduation rates, the number of individuals that we're able to intake into the program and what their success rate is once we have a dedicated navigator. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Yusati? Yeah, I just wanted to pile on with, as, um, with the others and say that this is a fantastic idea and uh, thank you for leading this. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, this is really probably more for, for Mark. The I know that when we went through this similar <clears throat> kind of process and we brought the navigators into the police department that was originally off of a grant and we started looking forward to how we budget it. So um, I would just ask that we you know, kind of put a placeholder in the budget that would be passed that first year because if it shows the same kind of success that we saw in that program, chances are it's going to come back. And I, I feel, um, I at least would advocate that if it's successful that we do make it part of our full-time budget. And I know that will be up to us, um, but kind of being ahead of it because that is the same kind of path we went through with the navigators for the police department and ended up coming back saying we want this in the budget. Certainly understand. Councilor Edmonds? Well, you haven't heard anything new tonight that I'm going to say, but thank you for working on this. I know that um, in working with you, my time on council, this has kind of been something that's you've been working on, and it's nice to see that it's been brought to fruition um, for the wellness court in particular. Uh, I've seen this firsthand through CASA, and I've seen uh, several success stories come of it. Um, I wasn't... Uh, if you will, a true believer um, of wellness courts, um, but seeing how um, how people get the time and attention that they need um, to get in the right direction, it's so helpful um, to turn people on the right path. And so I can't um, can't agree more. And so proud to say that um, I will be voting for this tonight. But thank you for all your work on this and um, everyone involved. I too took a deep breath and said, ah, yes, 
It's uh, sorely needed. So thank you for all that you do and your team. Roll call, please. Councillor Baker. No. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. And Councillor Seymour. Yes. The motion passes on a 6-1 vote. That brings us to item 10H2. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with the state of Colorado Department of Human Services to receive grant funding in the amount of $150,863 <laughs> to fund the salary benefits and office expenses for this position through December 31st, 2024. Councilor Emmons. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass item 10H2. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. And Councillor Baker. No. The motion passes on a 6-1 vote. There is no further business, so I will adjourn this meeting, and it is 8.52.